Hello dear students, uh, this is the first lecture of the subject strategic human resource management which is an elective in HR and uh, we are uh, in unit 1, we will be discussing the introductory part of this subject and that is the conceptual framework and models of strategic human resource management. I am Dr. Tripti Barthwal and I am Director Lal Bahadur Shastri Institute of Management and Development Studies. So, uh, I am sure that you have studied uh, a poor, uh, entire subject of strategic management and then you also have studied an entire subject of human resource management. Now, in very simple terms, uh, this subject of strategic human resource management is a combination of these two subjects only, strategic management and HRM. So, let us take these one by one. Strategic management implies the process of formulating, implementing and also evaluating various business strategies to achieve organizational objectives. So, you all know that what do we do in strategic management? The organization plans, uh, you know, a, it has a vision, it has a mission, then it has certain uh, goals, it has certain business definition and in order to achieve those goals and objectives and in order to realize its vision. Uh, the organization formulates certain strategies, uh, they have to decide among a choice of strategies, then they have to put those strategies into implementation mode or they have to put them into action after evaluating which strategy has which uh, merits and which demerits. And then uh, you know in the, in the long run it also has to see whether the strategies are able to achieve those objectives for which they were formulated. So, this is what uh, is the entire focus of strategic management as a subject. And then uh, we all know that uh, among you know the, there are various resources which an organization needs. Uh, we, the organization needs money, it needs infrastructure, it needs land, it needs uh, you know machinery, it needs information. Uh, so, uh, these are the, those resources which uh, contribute towards the objective achievement of an organization. But out of all these resources, uh, it is said that the human resource is the most important and critical resource for an organization uh, and the primary reason for this is that it is the only resource which has a capacity to think on its own, it can generate ideas, it can you know uh, create uh, several things out of uh, a small uh, idea and uh, then it, it is the only resource which is active in nature or resources are passive in nature the, until the time uh, a human resource does not act on these resources, brings them together uh, till that time these resources are lying dormant. They, they do not generate any value for any person or for any organization. So, uh, uh, the overall purpose of HRM is to ensure that the organization is able to achieve its success through its people. Right. So, people being the most important resource and the entire uh, you know the, the concept of managing these people uh, in the best possible way to get uh, you know the things done through them uh, by motivating them and by uh, you know developing their skills. So, that the objectives of the organization are achieved that is the purpose of HRM. So, now we take up the definition of uh, strategic human resource management which is by Professor Gary Dessler who is a very well known, uh, known uh, name in human resource management and of course in strategic HRM and he says that strategic human resource management means formulating and executing HR systems. So, you have to formulate and then you have to put them into action. HR systems and HR systems he means the HR policies and activities that produce the employee competencies. What is happening as, as a result of these policies, whether it is a recruitment policy, whether it is a selection policy, whether it is a training, compensation, uh, grievance management policies. Uh, so, what is happening as a result of these policies and these activities? That the competencies of the capacity of employees are getting developed, they are getting improved. And uh, the, their behaviors are, are also getting positive, their attitude towards entire work, their morale is increasing, the level of uh, positive motivation, self motivation is increasing. 
and behaviors the organization needs so as to achieve its strategic aims so strategic you know that when we talk about a strategic plan then what do we mean a plan which is meant for the organization as a whole which is a long term plan it is not merely confined to a particular unit or to a particular function to a particular department to few people but an organization uh, but a plan uh, which uh, you know by far covers the entire organization or a very large part of it which is very long term in nature in the sense that it will not be over in 2 3 months or so it is going to uh, have a long term impact also so that is a strategic plan so uh, in order to achieve that strategic objectives uh, through the strategic plan uh, whatever is done so that the employees contribute effectively to it that is the purview of strategic human resource management now this uh, concept of shrm uh, is based on two beliefs or two assertions the first is that an organization's human resources are of critical strategic importance so we have already discussed why and how uh, these human resources are important so if uh, we uh, do not agree on this that uh, the human resource is the most important resource of uh, the organization then uh, there is no point in discussing about strategic human resource management so um, uh, the the skills behaviors and interactions of employees have the potential to provide both the foundation for strategy formulation and the means for strategy implementation so this is a very very important thing which you must note down here that their skills behaviors and interactions of employee how they work together how they work in team you know how they manage conflict etc uh, have the potential to provide both the foundation for strategy formulation and the means of strategy implementation so it is basically the human resource management which is providing the foundation or which is providing the basis or the core for the formulation of strategy because ultimately it is the people who are formulating the strategies and it is based on the people's skills and their competencies that we can plan for the future as an organization and then these are the people if they are uh, you know very very positively motivated uh, during strategy implementation then the strategy is going to uh, bring to us desired results but if these people are not uh, you know they are not into uh, fully into the strategy implementation part uh, they are like 50-50 uh, or they are passively uh, you know motivated about it then the strategy implementation will be a big problem for the organization so everywhere it is the importance of human resource of an organization and second is the belief that HRM practices are instrumental in developing the strategic cap capability of its pool of human resource so uh, the second uh, reason why strategic human resource management is important because unless the people are capable you know uh, through the human resource function if we do not develop the skills and competencies of the people from time to time then what will happen that there will be a gap in the strategy strategic uh, achievement of objectives so it is very important that the, through the hrm practices and policies uh, we develop the strategic capability of our human resources so that is why shrm is a subject has a distinct significance and has a distinct role in the organization now importance of uh, strategic human resource management and uh, we have already discussed why it is important but to again uh, cover it in a nutshell we can say that it leads to strategy execution this helps accomplish business objectives and makes hr a strategic partner now this is a very important term because till now we refer to human resources as the employees the manpower of the organization we refer to them as one of the resources which an organization requires but under the whole perspective of uh, you know the importance of uh, employees in achieving the strategies of the organization uh, once this uh, you know belief is strengthened and once uh, we have this concept in mind that it unless the uh, the people are there with us we will not be able to implement the strategies in the desired way we will not be able to get the desired benefits from the strategies uh, then uh, once this belief is there then what happens 
then we start treating employees uh, or human resource not merely as one part of the resource, but as the partners in business, as investors, as partners, uh, you know, they, they invest money. Uh, into the business which is very important, they, they bring capital to the business. Similarly, human resource with their skills and they, with their competencies will make the best out of this investment. So, that is why they, they bring the investment of their competencies and skills and that is why they can be treated as strategic partners in an organization. Now, uh, we can, uh, uh, you know, discuss certain cases, examples wherein uh, it is clear that unless uh, once we have formulated a strategy and unless our human resource policies, human resource practices do not align with those, then uh, there will be a problem in uh, the achievement of the desired results. So, one example is that of Sears, which is a, a chain of uh, departmental stores, retail outlets in USA and it worked to reduce costs and uh, once it has this, it had decided on a strategic objective of bringing down the cost, then what happened that HRM started working with it and HR managers implemented compensation, job rotation and downsizing practices that reduced labor cost per store because once you go for you know job rotation, uh, what happens that per unit labor cost reduces because people become multidimensional, multifaceted, they can handle more than one uh, tasks. So, this is how they reduced their cost. Reducing cost was a strategic objective, but with uh, the, the uh, interventions of HR, they were able to achieve it. Then the next example is of Whirlpool, which sought to gain more global market share in appliances. HR strategies modified hiring practices and career paths to ensure multinational competence. So, they wanted to increase their global market share and as a result of that, uh, their uh, HR department modified recruitment and selection practices to, you know, bring in people who have that kind of uh, global exposure, who understand the various cultural diversities and differences and career paths also were changed uh, for people so that uh, their, their multi multinational competence could be developed. And the third example is of again a very famous company Colgate Palmolive which wanted to increase its global revenue, right. And the compensation system was changed to reward sales growth. So, the entire compensation system of the organization was changed so that it was linked to sales, so that the sales could improve. So, again a strategic goal, a long term goal and it is through the intervention of uh, the right kind of HR practices and policies that this goal. Uh, this strategic objective was achieved. <coughs> then we come to the principles of strategic human resource management. Now, these uh, principles have been mentioned by Price. In 1997, he mentioned 10 principles of strategic HRM, which he claimed are measurable in some way and can be used for benchmarking. So, the, he said that these principles one can measure that how well our strategic human resource management is functioning and it all these principles can also be used for benchmarking. Benchmarking meaning, meaning thereby that we can uh, compare our organization with the best organizations in the industry or with the best organizations in the world. Uh, so, uh, these, these on the basis of these principles, we can compare and we can find out where we stand and where what is the scope for improvement. So, the first is principle of comprehensiveness. Now, what is the principle of comprehensiveness? As the name suggests, comprehensive means it is covering the entire uh, you know, scope or it is in, in uh, it is covering the entire field. So, principle of comp comprehensiveness states that all, uh, you know, HR uh, uh, pra practices, all HR policies should be aligned to the strategic objective of the organization to the overall goals of the organization. Second is principle of commitment. 
it is a very important principle because we have already discussed how you know human resource management is so very important for the organization and uh, principle of commitment says that unless there is full cooperation and full uh, you know uh, uh, the, the kind of effort which is required by people of an organization uh, the the vision of the organization cannot be realized so human resource uh, has to work in uh, commitment to the objectives of the organization. Then principle of coherence, uh, you know all the HR policies and practices they should be in one direction. It should not be that they are counterproductive to each other. So, they, they should all, all be in one direction. They should not be in opposition to each other. That in at one point we are saying that we have to you know bring down on the compensation cost because we have to reduce the labor cost and on the other we are saying that we should give more and more benefits and incentives to uh, employees. So, that will be count, counter to each other. So, they should be coherent. Then principle of change. Now, these uh, HR uh, policies uh, when they uh, when we are uh, designing them to achieve the strategic objectives of the organization then uh, they should be flexible also that they should uh, change according to the needs and requirements of the organization. Then next is principle of control which is very very obvious whenever we are making a plan we have to monitor, we have to control, we have to see that this plan is moving in the right direction or not. So, principle of control has to be inbuilt into the uh, the practices or the policies which we are formulating. Then next is the principle of competent, competence. So, we have already discussed that everything is based on uh, how well our human resources are performing. So, uh, one criteria for good performance would be whether they are competent to perform that activity or not. And if they are not competent, then what is the uh, plan to increase their competence? What, what uh, is the, the via media or what is the, 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 the backup plan to increase their competence? So, principle of competence is also very important. Then next is principle of communication, there should be very, very clear, concise and transparent communication in the organization. So, whatever is, uh, whatever is being done, it should be informed to the employees also. Then uh, because if there is no uh, transparency in communication, then people lose trust in the organization, in their leader and once they lose the trust, then there will be no commitment and uh, nothing will come out of it. Next is principle of creativity. You know, the, the practices should be such that, you know, people should feel free to bring up new ideas or new uh, practices or to suggest something, some improvements. They should not fear that it is going to backfire, it is going to boomerang on them. So, that, that kind of a freedom, that kind of a, you know, a, a, the, that kind of a liberty should give, be given to people that whatever is relevant. Uh, whether it is, uh, with, whether it will be accepted or not, that is a second thing, but they should feel that kind of a freedom to express it. Then next is principle of credibility, right. So, the, whoever is the leader, whoever is formulating the policies, who the top management should enjoy uh, the trust of the people. They should have that uh, the people should have faith in them that whatever policies, whatever uh, strategies they will be formulating will be good for the organization, will be good for the employees. Nothing is going to be uh, go, uh, going against the well-being and the interests of the employees. And principle of cost effectiveness, uh, very, very important that any HR policy and practice should not give us benefits which are less than the cost. So, cost should be lesser, whatever cost we are incurring in putting those uh, policies into implementation mode, uh, that cost should be lesser and the benefits which we derive from them should be more. So, if we have uh, you know formulated a plan to improve the morale of employees, but the, the improvement in morale is lesser than the cost we are uh, you know uh, incurring in that program, then it is a waste, it is of no use. So, that we have to see. So, now the next very important thing is that what we are discussing is that HR uh, policies are there, strategic plans are there and uh, if they are not linked together, 
then the results will not be achieved. Right? Because uh, the whole point of discussion is that it is the human resource which is going to achieve the strategic objectives and if we want our employees to achieve the strategic objectives, then our HR policies, HR, HR uh, functions have to be aligned in that manner. So, if the alignment is not there, then everything goes haywire. So, we are now discussing aligning HR strategies with business strategies, you can call them alignment, you can call them linking, you can call them fit. Uh, so, there are three aspects of this HR fit. The first is vertical fit. Now, vertical fit as the name suggests, this aspect of vertical fit uh, concerns the coincidence between HR practices and overall business strategy. So, uh, very, very simple, whether our human resource policies, they support the vision of the organization. Is it uh, in the same direction, both of them are in the same direction or they are going in different directions. So, that is the vertical fit. Second is the horizontal fit. This relates to the extent to which HR activities are mutually consistent. So, uh, we have already discussed that you know there is there should be a principle of coherence also so, so that it is in, uh, ensured that all HR department and all the policies being formulated by them, they are moving together in the same direction. There is no confusion uh, among the employees. And of course, the third very important thing is external fit. Initially, you know, it was believed that HR is a uh, very, very inward looking function because we have to take care of the employees, we have nothing to do with the outside world. But now we have realized that uh, HR is also a very, very dynamic function and it re also requires an external fit that is how uh, how the environment is changing, external environment is changing, what are the factors which are changing and accordingly our HR policies and practices have to change according to them. Now, the next thing we discuss is the approaches to strategic human resource management. Now, these approaches have been proposed by Delery and Doty in 1996 and these approaches are universalistic, universalistic then contingency and configurational. So, uh, these are the three approaches and universalistic approach as the name suggests is an approach in which we believe that whatever are the successful human resource practices, they can, they should be used everywhere. They should have a universal application. So, if something is working for an organization and working well, then all the organizations can simply copy and paste and, uh, you know, start using them uh, in their case also. So, that is a universalistic approach. Then the second is the contingency approach. Contingency approach, as the name suggests, it says that, uh, you know, there is no one uh, plan, there is no one strategy which holds good for all the organizations because all organizations have their own structures, they have, they have their own systems of working, they have their own value systems, the top management philosophy is different, the vision is different, the mission is different and uh, of course, the environment in which they operate is also different for different organizations. So, uh, the, the, it is questioned that how we can have universal practices, how we can have similar practices across different organizations, even if those practices are, have been successful for one organization. So, uh, that is the thing. So, contingency means changing according to the situation. And the next is the configurational approach. Configurational approach is research based, that is we collect data on the structure of the organization, the leadership philosophy, the systems and then we design a model, uh, four or five models and which can be applicable to different organizations working, uh, operating under different settings. So, that is the configurational approach. Then the next thing is models of uh, strategic human resource management. The, there are three models. The first is the high performance working model. This was proposed by Guest. It involves the development of a number of interrelated approaches which together impact favorably, favorably on the performance of the firm in areas like productivity, quality and levels of customer service, growth, profits and delivery of increased shareholder value. So, uh, when we are talking in terms of strategic management, human resource management, then we have to take care of all the, the objectives of the organization in general, overall objectives. So, we have to take care of these objectives and we have to develop a model which, 
you know kind of delivers high performance across these points and that that is why he says that the starting point is leadership vision and benchmarking the leader has to clarify what he needs to achieve and then identify best practices of uh, similar successful organizations and then uh, this uh, the the practices of HR should be developed. The main drivers are decentralized decision making. Once the leader has formalized a vision, then after that, you know, people at different levels can discuss and come up with ideas. Development of people because nothing will work unless the competencies of people are developed. Then performance, operational, and people management processes are aligned to organizational objectives. So. Uh, whatever the organizational objectives are, uh, the HR policies, the performance of the people, the operational plans have to work accordingly. And of course, fair treatment and not only very important part of this model is not only of currently working employees, but those who leave the organization also because it creates a uh, you know image of the organization with the needs of the community and also alignment with the needs of the community outside the organization and high performance management practices. Then the second is the high commitment management model. One of the defining characteristics of HRM is the emphasis on the importance of enhancing mutual uh, commitment among co-contributors. So the management, the shareholders, the employees, they are all co-contributors and high commitment management may be described as a form of management that aims at eliciting commitment so that behavior is primarily self-regulated that is, there is no command discipline, you know, uh, 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 discipline from the top, discipline because of fear, but it has to be self-discipline rather than controlled by sanctions, punishments and uh, coercion pressure applied by the management and relations within the organization are based on high levels of trust. And the ways to achieve high commitment are development of leadership through training, then because trust has to come from top, a high level of functional flexibility abandoning potentially rigid job descriptions, people uh, can be moved from one uh, you know, point to another and uh, so uh, job description should not be rigid, reduction of hierarchies and de-emphasis of status differentials, there should not be, there should be a teamwork in the organization and the team infrastructure should include, include team briefing, team working and the concept of quality circles. And the third, the ways to achieve these are understanding job design as an area of management craft to provide intrinsic satisfaction to workers, a policy of compulsory layoffs and permanent, no compulsory layoffs and permanent employment guarantees and new forms of assessment and payment systems and high degree of involvement of employees in the management of quality. So, uh, this, and the third model is the high involvement management model and this is more democratic in approach. It takes the point of views of the other partners, their voices and there is focus on communication and participation with the aim of creating a climate in which there is a continuous dialogue, there is a sharing of information and ideas and there is a mutual understanding and the attributes desired are work teams, employee involvement activities and problem solving groups, job rotation and suggestion programs and decentralization of quality efforts. So that is, these are the three models and uh, I hope you have understood them. Thank you so much.